So here is the way to fix this problem because this recipe has failed us. Of course, as my excellent students suggested, we have to introduce something that will give us, in this particular example, the extra one-tenth, or maybe here, a factor of ten. So here's a very brilliant way to do it, and how one comes up with this brilliant way, I will tell you next time, because in retrospect it won't be brilliant at all. So I will introduce an arbitrary field, I'll call it P, lowercase p, right? So we're integrating f, f might change, right? Now we're integrating f in a moment, it might be some other function h, then some other function g, and so on. I might be one interested in integrating different things over the curve. But let me pick an arbitrary function p, and it's a function in this sense. It's a function in the sense that it's defined not with respect to some parameter, but in the point-wise sense, that at this point I, have, I know what the value of p is, at this point I know what the value of p is, and at this point I know what the value of p is. So some other field. So it's almost like not just absolute integration, but integration with respect to this other field p. And then I'll choose a very specific p to make it match our intuition. But for, but for now let it be an arbitrary function p. Then here is the recipe. One other thing I'll mention is that once you introduce a parameter gamma, p becomes p of gamma, becomes a function of gamma. If you introduce an alternative parameter, it becomes an alternative function of capital gamma. Okay, and so here is my new recipe. Of course, I will have to plug in, and the centerpiece will of course be f as a function of gamma. But as a correction element, I will throw in p prime of gamma. And this will prove to fix it. This will prove to fix it, and I'll prove it to you right now, in five minutes, that this fixes it. It fixes it in the sense that if I do the same thing in the alternative parametrization, so now I will go from capital A to capital B, in other words, the limits of integration will correspond to the range of the new parameter, capital gamma. And then here I will have to put in the derivative, right? That's the key, that it's not p of gamma, it's the derivative that the two integrals will have the same value. And, we, and I just want to say some clarifying words about this, right? This is a different function p. This, this is this, this function when it's the manifestation of p, the invariant field with respect to the alternative parameter. And here I'm taking its derivative. Does that make sense? Yeah, let me prove that these two integrals have the same value. And it's wonderful that it can be an arbitrary function p, and its derivative fixes it. And you can kind of see how it would fix it, because maybe this, in our previous example, would be one-tenth of this. And that's the fix we need, right? That's the one-tenth you wanted to, you all wanted to see there. That's the one-tenth that we were missing. So maybe this is one-tenth of this. Okay, so I will now show you how this integral equals this integral. Well, how is f of little gamma related to f of capital gamma? Well, that's straightforward. To get f of lowercase gamma, you just have to take f of capital gamma and plug in how capital gamma depends on lowercase gamma. Does that make sense? That's the function that I had written here, where you get the parameter capital gamma by substituting how little gamma depends on capital gamma. That's this function right here in our particular example. Okay, so I'll begin rewriting. So far so good. This is not the challenge because there's no derivative. This is just substitution. I'm, I'm actually looking here. So from A to B, stayed the same, and this function is just the composition of these two functions. So here it is, that's the easy step. The question is, how are these functions related? Okay, let's find, find out how are these functions related. The derivatives. Well, let me first write down 
how the functions are related. And of course, they're related the exact same way. You just have to take how this field P depends on capital gamma and plug in this function, the change of variables function, how capital gamma depends on little case gamma. Okay. Now let's take the derivative of both sides. And of course, we'll use the chain rule. So we discover, all right, but just a reminder that this P is different from this P. This is how P depends on the first parameter. And this is how P depends on the alternative parameter. There you go. That's the relationship. Make sense? Now let me write it in. Okay. Does this integral, can I put in the equal sign? Are they the same? Yes, that's, that's why I left this on the board. It's a direct one for one perfect application of this change of variables formula, integration by substitution, as we call it. Do you guys see that? Here we have, think of this combined quantity as the function f here. Of course, that's a different f, right? So let's see what happened here. We have a function, right? We substituted into it, right? Or maybe think of this, right? We substituted into it capital gamma of lowercase gamma, which corresponds to capital G of x, right? And then the whole integrand is multiplied by the derivative of the substitution. So it's actually a perfect application of this formula. I'm just matching up the elements. Do you see that it's right one for one, right, unmodified application of the change of variables formula? And so by that, by the change of variables formula, which is just the chain rule combined with the fundamental theorem of calculus, these two integrals are equal. And this is our factor of one tenth which here, of course, would be 10, because we're going from this integral to this one. So you wanted to see 1 tenth in the second integral, but this actually shows you that we have 10 in the original one. So there is the 1 tenth that we were missing, and that's, and that's the factor that restores invariance. And, it's, and, it, and it is responsible for making everything work, when the change of variables occurs. Does that make sense? So this is the fix. Ta-da! I mean, we don't have time to celebrate, right? But that's sort of the moment that shows that the two integrals are the same. And the only question is, what would be the best P, right? Because right now we get sameness, in other words, invariance for any field P. And I will give you the answer, and if you think about it for a minute and a half, you'll know that it's the right answer. So the right P to take, so that not only do we have agreement, but they actually agree with our intuitive understanding of what this integral means, is for P to take arc length. That's the function that we want. Right? Because you can kind of see, then this becomes ds d gamma. So ds d gamma d gamma becomes ds, I'm speaking very loosely. So this just becomes the integral with respect to arc length, which will correspond to our intuitive understanding of what this means. Does that make sense? So that's to satisfy the second, in my opinion, less important criterion for what it means to translate the physical integral to an arithmetic integral. Okay, great.